Good morning everyone and welcome to the morning briefing on Thursday the 14th of March. As you enter the classroom you should have your full uniform on um, with your coat already taken off before you enter the room. Please make sure that as you sit down you display your equipment on the desk in front of you as well as having your South Quizzing A4 homework open so that your period one teachers can check you've completed your home learning. Now today I'm going to talk to you about something that Mr Mohammed started yesterday which is about how to revise. Now it doesn't really matter what year group you're in because everybody can benefit from knowing how to revise. Revision is something that we're always asked about. How do I revise? I'm not sure what the best way is for me. And the truth is, is that really you're going to have to try as many different strategies as you can until you work out the strategy that suits you most. So today I'm going to talk to you about mind mapping. So you've already looked at the revision clock with Mr Mohammed yesterday. And mind mapping is the second strategy that I'm going to go through with you today. Now mind mapping is great for people who are visual learners. And when I did all my revision at school, mind mapping was exactly what I used to do. So mind mapping looks like this. It's a visual diagram that provides an overview or a summary of a topic or an idea. Now, in order to create a mind map, you need to know what you're going to put in it. So you need to make sure that you are really secure in the core knowledge and the essential knowledge that you need to know for whatever exam or whatever summative test or whatever unit you are going to be assessed on. So in this case, I've chosen Macbeth's characters. So I know that the core knowledge in relation to this topic is all the characters that are in Macbeth. As you can see from the yellow boxes, I would then continue by putting information about their traits, so their, their personality, how they behave, what they look like, um, and how they are with other characters. And then in the green boxes, I would attach famous quotes to each of those characters. And that would be my mind map for Macbeth's characters complete. Now, what you will hear later on about mind mapping is once you've finished your mind map, the key is that it becomes part of your revision. You use it to look at, read through every day, cover it, try and write down a part of it, see how much you can remember, or to recreate it and see how much of the mind map you can remember. One of the things that I think is the benefit of mind mapping is that it really helps you remember information. One of the reasons that I remember information from a mind map is because I can remember where it is positioned on the page. And that's because I would describe myself as a visual learner. Things are chunked into sections in a mind map and that makes things more manageable for you to recall and for you to also think about things in smaller sections rather than the huge big idea that you're trying to revise. We generally find it easier to remember images or diagrams in comparison to plain text. So if you wanted to add images to your mind map, then, then that's perfectly fine. They're, they're unique to you, they're personal, they should support your revision. If you're somebody that is really into art, symbols or diagrams or images might help you to remember different parts of the mind map too. They're mental triggers for what we for what we call our memory recall. So when we see an image we associate it with something and that's what a mind map does. It starts to create connections in our brain um, to different areas of that topic so that we don't necessarily remember it as one huge thing. We remember it as the sections that it is that are included in it. Another benefit is that you see everything at a glance. It's on one single side of paper and things look a lot more manageable when they're on one piece of paper in front of you in terms of revision. It helps you to quickly and easily spot connections between relationships in a big idea or between things that you've already studied before and it helps your mind to make all those connections it needs to in order to remember information. Another thing it helps you to do is to help you to see the overall bigger picture of your topic. So everything will become connected. So although I've got some uh, a mind map of Macbeth's characters, I'm thinking about how those characters all fit together and how they then fit to the story as well. Well, the mind maps are also quick and efficient for everyone. 
They're a quick way of dealing with all the information that you need to learn and getting it into one page to make sure revision can be focused. So how do you go about creating a mind map then? Well, I've already said there's no real right or wrong way to create a mind map. But some of, some of the guidelines that you can follow to get you started are below. So you put your main idea in the middle of the page. Draw a circle around it or a square around it, whatever you prefer. Then you add all the related keywords or phrases that you can think of to that main idea. Then you start to branch off from each of the keywords. What do you associate with that keyword? You shouldn't be using whole sentences because you're not going to remember them. You are using single words or single phrases. And you can add as many branches to your mind map as you need. Use different images or different colours as you see fit to help you remember different sections. Remember to keep the mind map to one single side of paper. It, it, no one's going to look at your um, mind map. It's not a competition. It's for you. It's for you to display around your room, around your house, for you to support your revision. So remember that your mind map needs to be, be become part of your revision schedule. Making the mind map is the initial thing. You then might use the mind map to help you create, for example, a flashcard on a particular section of um, your mind map. You could also revisit it in terms of covering a section of it and trying to remember how much was on it and rewrite it in the same way as you would with your self quizzing homework. So using the look, uh, read, look, read, cover, write and check technique. Stick them up around your home. You should be seeing them all the time. The more you see information, the more you read information, little and often, the more likely you are to remember it. Remember, revision isn't something that can be done uh, the night before, the day before, even a couple of weeks before. If you're in year 11 and 13, or even year 12 and year 10, and you haven't started now, you need to be thinking about planning your revision in and making sure you can complete it little and often. And even if you're in a year group that isn't examined, getting into these habits now is a brilliant thing to do. To know all about how to revise now is an amazing thing to do because actually it will make your life and your learning experience a lot easier in the process. Have a great day, everyone.